Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Monday, August 17th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's the Atlantic, and it's been a rather quiet hurricane season so far, only three storms through August 15th, but the main part of the season is really during the next 8 to 12 weeks through early October, and even in El Nino years like this one, where the main development region is very unfavorable on average, the Atlantic usually wakes up by about this time of the season, and we get a couple of storms out here in the deep tropics, and we do have a nice area of disturbed weather coming onto your screen from the east. This is a tropical wave embedded in the monsoon trough coming toward the west, and this may have a closed circulation with it if we get a better view here. On the visible you can see it's spinning. A uh, nice area of moderate convection could be better, uh, mostly weighted toward the south side where all the moisture is. And ASCAD Pass, it's about eight hours old now, but it did clip the wave, and you can see the, the axis here. We do have southeasterlies on the east side, northwesterlies, or northeasterlies on the west side, and we know there's monsoonal southwesterlies on the south side, so all that's really missing is confirmation of some kind of northwest wind in the southwest quadrant before we can say this has a closed circulation. Uh, it may have one um, at some point today. It's hard to tell without another good ASCAT pass or a ship observation. Um, but there is some convection with it, and the Atlantic, you know, rather stable as usual, especially during an El Nino year. You can see a cloud of dry air from the Sahel that I'm outlining here, this murkier color inside here. This is uh, dust blowing off Africa from the trades here and the waves, the tropical waves that really kick that dust up and bring it off the coast from the east. And this usually interacts with these waves as they come off, and a lot of them have died to this dry air this year and have not been able to develop. But usually when they're embedded in an active monsoon trough like this, they're often protected more or less from the dry air to the north for a little while at least. Uh, most of this moisture coming out of the south really sustains a little little bubble of moisture here that allows them to become interesting before they get farther west and then once they get past you know 40 50 west over in here they get detached from this nice little monsoonal zone and their uh, umbilical cord if you will of moisture often gets severed but it's going to take a few days for this system designated invest 96l to lose its moisture support it's moving much slower than normal for a wave in this position and it will take uh, possibly up to a week for it to get you know all the way over to 55 60 west and threaten the islands over here so this is going to have some time to work on itself and uh, this dry air you see on the GFS here it's this is a day four forecast so it's really barely moved you can see how slow it's moving by day four the dry air starts to finally get wrapped into this thing but four days is a long time for a system to become organized and the upper level winds are pretty favorable, very light easterly flow, which is generally what tropical waves like, near zero shear above the system. You can see this nice little upper ridge over the entire eastern Atlantic. The shear zone back here uh, just east of the Caribbean due to the uh, average tut trough that's usually sitting here north of the Lesser Antilles. But again, this is going to take days for it to reach the shear zone and a few days for the dry air to significantly impact the system. So there is some time for this to develop. And the latest European came out uh, just before this video was made, has a hurricane moving toward the islands by day seven. Now take this with a grain of salt because the model had no development at all last night, including every single one of the 50 ensemble members from the European had no development last night. So it would be nice to see some consistency from a model like this. As good as the European is, you usually don't want to jump on a single run like this, especially because these waves do tend to struggle as they approach the islands. Remember there's a a trade wind acceleration that occurs in the Caribbean that generally makes it hard for systems to maintain a closed circulation and uh, deep thunderstorm activity in the eastern Caribbean, especially when they're weak. They have to be developed hurricanes before entering the Caribbean if they want to survive at all. But it's a two-tiered system with the Caribbean. The, there's the primary acceleration in the central Caribbean, but there's an acceleration that occurs before the islands as well. So when you get west of about 45, 50 west, this area between 50 and 60 west is where these waves tend to struggle on approach to the islands unless they've already formed into tropical storms and become reasonably strong. If they are reasonably strong right about at this longitude moving west, then they usually survive and can even strengthen as they come toward the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. But then if they enter the Caribbean, they can still struggle if they are not uh, strong to major hurricanes. So it's a two-tiered system. 
Uh, the European thinks this will be a borderline hurricane before making it to the first tier, and so it continues to strengthen until it makes it into the Eastern Caribbean before finally dying to Hispaniola at the end of the run. But details like that at day 10, you can throw those out at this point. This is moving so slowly that we don't even know what it's going to look like as it approaches the islands. But there's a decent chance of formation now. The FSU statistically corrected model genesis probability is 89% from the Canadian GFS and UK Met. And then the European I just showed you is not included on this, but it has genesis. So all four of the uh, major global models do have genesis forecasted. And so this is a generally good probability. The NHC is at 70% chance of formation during the next five days. So it's a, a decent chance right now that this will become a storm at some point during the next couple of days on its way west. Now we've talked a little bit about the environment. Uh, it gets a lot worse as it comes west, um, but where is it going to track is another question. Is it actually going to threaten the islands or is it going to move north? That's usually the million dollar question with these things. The islands would love some rain right now, including Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, so uh, they're probably wishing for this to come this way instead of north. Well if we look at the GFS, uh, this is the 500 millibar forecast out to day 5. Our system is here. This is 96L. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, different model solutions dealing with this trough in the western Atlantic here, and there's a second trough to its east. You can see the jet way up to the north here, and usually when you have a, a lot of weakness you know, near Bermuda here, you expect these systems to try to gravitate toward the north and maybe recurve near Bermuda here, but uh, these particular two troughs are a little bit too far north and zonally oriented that you actually have an area of lower heights here and then a little banana shaped ridge. You can just see it, you know, maybe if I, maybe if I don't draw all over it and cover it up for you, you can see a little bit of an anticyclonic clockwise ellipse of airflow here uh, in the area I've outlined. And this, this little ridge actually, as this trough moves out and this one comes west and moves out as well, this ridge actually builds west with time and it stays north of 96 as it moves west and this ridge accompanies it all the way to the islands and that's why the European has this moving into the Lesser Antilles and eventually Hispaniola is it shows this ridge so despite the pattern with all this going on to the north this ridge actually builds in underneath of all that and really pins this thing down at low latitude and that's the current projection uh, always room for things to change but the general pattern looks like it's going to force this into the Lesser Antilles in one form or another, at least right now. But it's again about seven days, maybe eight days, before this actually makes it to the islands. So folks in here should definitely uh, start keeping an eye on this, but we have no way really right now of knowing seven days in advance what this is going to look like coming into the islands. Certainly uh, not ironed out in terms of details right now. But there's a decent chance that there will be a storm at some point from this system as it moves uh, to the west and eventually approaching the islands in about a week very slowly. So lots of time to watch this one and uh, let's hope we get some well much needed rain into this area of the Caribbean here. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.